Hello there you guys, welcome to another of my live videos and on this video tonight there is quite a few topics to delve into. So I am going to be giving you a bit more additional information on some of the gears from Atletico Madrid. Then I am going to be giving you some latest news on Kai Havertz from Bayer Leverkusen. I haven't spoken with you about Kai Havertz for quite some time. And also going to be talking with you a bit more about Chris Smalling. Also going to mention, you know, Jaden Sancho on this video as well. So yeah, so now let's delve into the topic. So we're going to start with the news on Sony Gears. So according to reports uh, from the Spanish press, they have allegedly said that Sony Gears to Manchester United is practically done and confirmation is expected at the end of the campaign. Now, Sony Gears, of course, has got a release clause of around 130 odd million in his Atletico Madrid contract. But I think Atletico Madrid are willing to, you know, accept like half of his release clause. So Atletico Madrid are willing to accept around £70 million for him. Now, obviously no reports were coming out the other week, you know, saying that Son the Gears to Manchester United is very, very close. Now, Son the Gears has spent the vast majority of his career with Atletico Madrid. I think this has been Son the Gears' 12th season at Atletico Madrid. Um, he's been at Atletico Madrid since 2008. I think Son the Gears has made, is it, 300 odd appearances in all competitions. Son the Gears can play as a defensive midfielder. And he can also play as a box-to-box -box midfielder. When he was younger, he was predominantly a centre-half with Son Gears. Now, Son Gears has got a contract with Atletico Madrid until 2026. So he's still got a good five years or so left on his current contract. Don't forget back in 2017, Son Gears had signed a nine-year contract with Atletico Madrid. And this is when his £130 million release clause came into the equation. So on the gears is in his mid twenties, he's what, twenty five or twenty six years of age. But Atletico Madrid are willing to do business with a player. Uh, like I mentioned, you know, Atletico Madrid have lost quite a few of their imperative players in recent years. Don't forget, you know, last on the lost Anton Griezmann last summer. After he enjoyed five years with Atletico Madrid, you know, they lost Diego Godin after I think he enjoyed a good nine years with them. They also lost Rodri last year. But, you know, Atletico Madrid have also recruited quite a few players in, in recent years as well as let players go. You know, they've got Joe Felix in for £113 million. He's, Atletico, he's he one of Atletico Madrid's most expensive signings. Well, he's the fourth most expensive player in the world. They also got Thomas Lamar in. Did Atletico Madrid, they got Kieran Trippier in. I think they've recruited Diego Costa and Avril Morata in in recent years as well. So um, there you go and that. So yeah, so actually, you know, Sony Gears, you know, could actually be our first signing in the summer transfer window. But we're actually seeing him as an adequate replacement for Paul Pogba, you know, Sony, Sony Gears. Now, I think it did reveal uh, last October, which was last year, of course, saying that Barcelona had agreed to get Sony Gears from Atletico Madrid for around £15 million. But Barcelona decided not to take... Um, the first option so this is why his move to Barcelona didn't materialise um, you know do you think Son the Gears you know would do very very well if he was to come to the Premier League you know do let me know in the comments below um, I think it did mention as well before the football season got suspended uh, that we was willing to um, increase Son the Gears' wages and we was willing to offer him close to £200,000 a week or something like that. I think his current wages at Atletico, at Atletico Madrid at the moment are like £115,000 a week. But yeah, so reportedly selling the gears to Manchester United is practically done. That's according, you know, to recent reports. So anyway, it's replicating what it said last week and that because there was a report saying last week that... It, so on the gears to Man United's done, practically, and a fee of £70 million has been agreed. So yeah, so that's the latest news on Sony Gears. But you know, do you think Sony Gears would go well alongside the likes of, you know, Fernandez, McTominway and Fred and that in our midfield? But yeah, so according to recent reports, it does say, you know, we are hoping to get Jaden Sancho and Sony Gears for £130 million. 
So we're hoping to get Sancho for around £60 million. And obviously, you know, we're hoping to get Son Guillez for £70 million. So that adds up to £130 million. If obviously, you know, their full asking price, their full asking price prices, um, it obviously, you know, cost us um, around £232 million for both players. So we really, we're hoping to save over £100 million for both players. Now, you know the news on Jadon Sancho, don't you? By the way, Jadon Sancho was playing today in Brushy Dortmund's 2-0 win against Wolfsburg. Uh, he didn't start the game. He was on the substitutes bench uh, for the second game in a row. And reflecting on that, it's got a lot of Manchester United fans talking. Uh, I think Jadon Sancho did play in Dortmund's game last week against Sancho. I think he came on with 11 minutes to go. He couldn't play the game against um, Schalke from the start because uh, Jadon Sancho had a calf injury. Uh, Jadon Sancho, by the way, today played a part in Borussia Dortmund's second goal. So there you go on that. Now, I don't know what's really happening with Jadon Sancho, to be quite honest with you. Uh, recent reports have said that Bayern Munich have expressed their interest in Jadon Sancho. Um, I think Borussia Dortmund are reluctant to let... Uh, Jadon Sancho joined by Munich because obviously no, it is Borussia Dortmund's rivals. It is Borussia Dortmund's rivals. Uh, Borussia Dortmund have said they're not willing to sell Jadon Sancho until the transfer market stabilises. So they are willing to wait until transfer fees return back to normal. They wait until they return back to normal. Um, obviously, you know, Dortmund have remained ruthless over their valuation anyway. You know, they have said they do want at least £100 million for Sancho. But, you know, we said the other week we are not willing to smash our transfer record for Jadon Sancho. Yeah, he said actually, you know, the other week that we're only willing to pay £60 or £70 million for him. But I don't think either of them figures are going to be enough to convince Borussia Dortmund to offload him in that. But we still do remain the favourites to sign Jadon Sancho. Now, like I mentioned, so, you know, there's been quite a few clubs that have been in for him. Us, Bayern Munich, Liverpool, Chelsea have also been in for him. But, you know, David dornstein has been talking a lot recently. <laughs> Not only about Jadon Sancho, in recent weeks he's been talking about Tamo Werner as well from RP Lesbig. But David Einstein did say that there's a very high chance that Sancho will join Manchester United. I think he mentioned this earlier on this week. But he did say the other week that Dortmund will not sell him for less than £100 million. So there you go in that. But I think Jadon Sancho's preferred option is a move to Manchester United in that. You know, so I don't really know what's happening with him. You know, we first expressed our interest in Jadon Sancho in 2017. That's when we first expressed our interest in him. And this was before he went to Borussia Dortmund. And obviously, you know, Jadon Sancho now is into his third season with Borussia Dortmund. You know, like I said, you know, he's been a revelation since his arrival in Germany. He really, really has. Uh, Dortmund only paid £8 million for him from Manchester City. So Dortmund, you know, looking to make like a £92 million profit on the player. Jadon Sancho's valuation has persistently grown, reflecting on, you know, his good run of performances with Borussia Dortmund. Sancho still got a contract with Dortmund until 2022. Uh, but I've outlined a couple of the reasons why I take him at Manchester United, Jadon Sancho, is because, you know, he's well proven in the Premier League. And obviously, you know, before he was at us, he was at Man City. Uh, but the main explanation why I left Manchester City is because he didn't get any first team opportunities. And before I was at Manchester City, he was at Watford, was Jadon Sancho. He began his footballing career at Watford and he was there for several years. And he was there for several years and that. Uh, don't forget, you know, we've already confirmed that we are willing to offer Jadon Sancho the number seven because we have got number seven vacant at the moment. And like I've mentioned to you before, we've had a lot of good number sevens up and down the generations, but our recent number sevens haven't been so good in that. Uh, don't forget, you know, Dortmund are known as a selling football club, because like I said, you know, they've let quite a few of their players go to the Premier League in recent years. They let uh, Pulisic go, they let Bamiyan go, they let Kagawa go at one point, they let Ilkwan Gundogan go. <coughs> They let Ilkwan Gundogan go. Um, who else did they let go? They let Mkhitaryan go. 
Uh, don't forget, you know, the Latus and Dembele go to Barcelona. Was that back in 2017? Uh, they also let Matt Hummels go to Bayern Munich. So a lot of their players have left for the Premier League and some players have left who didn't go to the Premier League. But Borussia Dortmund have recruited quite a few players in, in recent years. You know, obviously they've got Haaland in January, who's been a revelation for them. Um, obviously, you know, they've got Emre Chan recently. You know, they also got Forgan Hazard, Julian Braun. So they have recruited quite a few players in Albert Borussia Dortmund. I think if Jadon Sancho is sold, like I mentioned before, Manchester City do benefit from it because I do think they get around 15% of the transfer fee. But Jadon Sancho is only at the age of 20, so he is still very, very young and he is predominantly a right winner. And another one of the main explanations why I take him, not only because he's prem Premier League proven, I'd also take him because he's got a very, very good friendship with Marcus Rashford. And Rashford did reveal earlier on in the season, you know, that he wants Jadon Sancho and Man United next season. So he is our number one priority target, is Jadon Sancho. I said to you, didn't I, if Jadon Sancho was to go back to London, I think he'd, you know, go to Chelsea because he wouldn't go to Arsenal. He wouldn't go to Tottenham because Daniel Lever won't pay that kind of money for Sancho and he certainly would not go back to Watford. But, you know, Dortmund did say anyway, you know, if they will not stand in Jadon Sancho's way if he does want to leave. You had reports coming out a couple of weeks ago saying, you know, now we're planning to sign Jadon Sancho next summer instead of this summer. That's what came out a couple of weeks ago and that. And Dortmund did say, you know, they're actually convinced that Jadon Sancho will remain loyal to them for at least another season. But, you know, we was relentlessly linked with Jadon Sancho last year. You know, we really, really was. But, yeah, but like I said to, you know, Sancho, you know, to Manchester United could be in doubt. Obviously, you know, because Ed Woodward spoke to investors on a conference call on Thursday and he revealed our latest, our latest financial figures. And don't forget, like I've mentioned on my recent videos, our net debt has risen up to 429 million point, 429.1 million, yeah. Uh, the club are no longer predicting revenues of up to 580 million pounds. And don't forget, you know, Ed Woodward also mentioned on his statement that the coronavirus pandemic is one of the hardest moments in Manchester United's 142-year history. Uh, but the coronavirus pandemic has cost us um, around £28 million, but we do expect the final figure to be higher. And like I updated you um, on a recent video, which I think has just uploaded, uh, Solskjaer's transfer limit has been set. And reportedly, Ed Woodward is privately reluctant to spend any more than 60 or £70 million pounds for any player. So this is why Jadon Sancho now to Manchester United could be in doubt on that. But, you know, Dortmund even said themselves, well, the Russia Dortmund managing director, you know, even said that, you know, they expect players' transfer valuations to drop, you know, due to the coronavirus crisis. So there's still possibility to chance that we can get, you know, Jane and Sancho on the board. But yeah, I think he'd go very, very well alongside the likes of Rashford, Martial and, you know, Greenwood in our attacking line. I really, really do. So, um, yeah, so that's the news on him. That's the news on him. Um, also now, let's give you the news on Kai Havertz from Bayer Leverkusen. By the way, Kai Havertz scored twice. Uh, in Bayer Leverkusen's win, was it against Borussia Mönchengladbach? Kai Havertz scored twice, yeah. And I think, you know, Manchester United fans have urged, you know, Solskjaer to sign Kai Havertz. Now, there has been quite a few clubs that have been in for Kai Havertz. You know, obviously, you know, Liverpool have been relentlessly linked with him. Um, I think it did recently mention that Manchester City have been interested in Kai Havertz because, you know, they're looking for an adequate replacement for David Silva. Obviously, I think David Silva is expected to leave in the summer transfer window. Now, Kai Havertz can play as an attacking midfielder and he can also play as a winner. He is only the age of 20, so he is very, very young. Up until this point, Kai Havertz has spent the entirety of his career with Bayer Leverkusen. Don't forget, Kai Havertz was in Bayer Leverkusen's youth setup for several years. 
And I think he's been in Bayer Leverkusen's senior squad since, like, is it 2016 or 2017? But since then, he has become an integral part of Bayer Leverkusen's team. Um, he has actually you know, made um, over 100 appearances for Bayer Leverkusen. Don't forget Kai Havertz became the youngest uh, debutant in the Bundesliga. The youngest debutant in the Bundesliga. And I think uh, the youngest player to reach a milestone of 50 and 100 Bundesliga appearances. I think Kai Havertz has got a contract with Leverkusen until 2022. Uh, Kai Havertz, again, will cost a substantial amount. I think by Leverkusen have said, you know, they want in the 90 odd million pound range. Maybe they could demand over 100 million pounds for Kai Havertz. Uh, so, yeah, but we have, you know, inquired about his availability before. So, Man United fans would like to see him get recommended in. Now, let's delve into the news on Chris Smalling. Now, I've just been reading recent reports regarding Chris Smalling, and it does say that Chris Smalling... It does say that Chris Smalling uh, does not regret leaving Manchester United because don't forget we let Chris Smalling leave last summer. You know, he did go out on loan to Roma. And Smalling also said he's very proud to represent Roma and he's got his heart set out, you know, for Roma and that. But I've got to say, since his arrival in Italy, he has been a revelation as Chris Smalling. Uh, was it a good three or four weeks ago now, like I mentioned, Paulo Fonesca, who is the Roma manager, he was talking about how good Chris Smalling has done on his loan spell with Roma. And he was talking about how professional he is. How professional he is. And all of that. Uh, these are some of the stuff, you know, that Paulo Fonesca did say. And I think, you know, Roma are keen on getting Chris Smalling on a permanent transfer. Whether they get him permanently or not, I do not know. I think, you know, we have revealed our asking price, you know, to get rid of Chris Smalling permanently. I think we do want, like, is it in the 20-odd million pound range for Smalling? I think Smalling's contract with us does run until 2022 and all of that. Uh, also, too, Chris Smalling was saying, you know, you know, some players, you know, have obviously, you know, gone abroad and stuff like that, but not many. But, you know, we won't take Chris Smalling back at Manchester United because, you know, he can't get into the team. You know, obviously, you no, know, Chris Smalling did enjoy nine years with us. Obviously, you know, we got him from Fulham back in 2010 and that was under the Alex Ferguson era. We got Chris Smalling. And, uh, but I thought he was a very, very good serving, long-serving player for the football club. Enjoyed some bad games, but he also enjoyed some good games, did Smalling. Uh, but he won't come back to Manchester United. I'm very, very sceptical about that. Maybe he could come back to the Premier League, but I don't think you know he'll come back to Manchester United. So we will look to get rid of him permanently. You know, we've got a lot of centre halves in the team now. As it stands, you know, you've got Harry Maguire and Victor Lindelof that are our first choice centre halves. You've got Bay and Tuan Zebe that are our backup centre halves. Obviously, you know, you've got Phil Jones. That's one of our centre halves, but I think he's going to be leaving Manchester United in the summer transfer window. In the summer chance when you've got Fossil Mental that can play as a centre half and that. Um, you know, Marcus Rojo, he's out on loan at Estudiantes. I also do believe that we're going to get rid of him on a permanent transfer. So there you go. So yeah, Chris Smalling, you know, won't come back to Manchester United. But yeah, so that's the latest news on him. By the way, um, we are in search for a centre half. Um, because Solskjaer, I think, wants to recommend the centre-half in, even though we have got a lot of centre-halves in the team and that. But there's been quite a few centre-halves on our on our agenda in that. So that is the latest news on all of that. As you all know, uh, the Premier League season is supposedly resuming next month. Um, I heard reports, you know, saying the season could be starting on the 19th of June. Some reports were contrast and said some, you know, the season could start on the 18th of June. Uh, reports were also contrasted that. Other reports were also contrasted that, saying the season could resume on the twelfth of June. It all depends on the fitness levels. But I think you know the season is going to be resuming next month. I really, really do in that because obviously you know the Bundesliga um, is obviously you know recently returned. Um, as you all know, Liga One that got cancelled. Um, quite a few you know got cancelled. To be quite honest with you. 
But the Premier League season has been suspended, you know, for the good is it nine or ten weeks now. The last time, you know, we played uh, it was our 5 0 win against Lask. Uh, the season has been suspended since the 13th of March. So there you go. The positive news is, like I've updated you on my recent videos, is that, you know, now clubs have up and down the country have recently returned to training. Uh, we returned to training on Wednesday. Um, I think our full squad are now in training, by the way, which is even more positive news. But, you know, the Premier League uh, clubs on the Premier League, sorry, confirmed on Monday on a statement that clubs have voted to return to smaller training groups. So this is a step, you know, to resuming. This is the first step, you know, to resuming the season. Don't forget, you know, Tottenham Man United is the first Premier League game back. Um, it is live on Friday Night Football, you know, really, really looking forward to it. Um, like I said, Solskjaer will be looking to beat Jose Mourinho for the second time as manager because he's already beaten Jose Mourinho once as Ole Gunnar Solskjaer. Uh, like I said, there's 92 games to play in all competitions. Uh, there's around nine games left in the Premier League. So I think, you know, is it going to be resuming? You know, I really, really do and that. But it's good, you know, that it is coming back because, you know, we have got to finish the season. Obviously, you know, there was talks of, you know, games being venued at neutral grounds, but I don't see that happening because too many teams have been protesting against that. You know, they really, really have. So I do see it resuming anyway. I do see it resuming. And like I mentioned, you know, there's decisions that Manchester United have got to make, you know, before the football season resumes. Like I said, Tino, we've got to make a decision on Odin Igalo's future. We've not yet made a decision on Odin Igalo's future um, because we don't know if we're going to get be getting Odin Igalo permanently or not. Don't forget Shanghai Shinu confirmed a couple of weeks ago, was it, you know, that they want £20 million for Odin Igalo. Solskjaer wants to get Igalo permanently, but we may have reservations about paying £20 million to get him permanently. Don't forget, Odin Igalo does want his loan deal at the football club extended. Uh, so maybe we're looking to extend it until the end of next month. Because it's nearly seven days now until Odin Igalo's current contract at the foot current loan deal, sorry, at the football club expires. His loan deal, you know, does expire on the 31st of May. But Man United fans have got different perceptions on Odin Igalo. You know, to be fair, Odin Igalo has enjoyed a fantastic start to his Manchester United career. Um, because obviously, you know, he has got four goals in three starts for the club. This was obviously, you know, before the football season got suspended. And he has, you know, been a very, very good cover-up to Marcus Rashford as Igalo. He really, really has. So should Manchester United get him on a permanent transfer? James Cooper, who was from who was from Sky Sports, he actually said that we do remain relaxed over Odin Igalo's future. Uh, like I said, we've also got to make a decision on Paul Pogba's future because there's a lot of uncertainty over Paul Pogba's future. We've also got to make a decision over Diego Delors' future as well. Uh, Solskjaer is determined to keep Diego Delor, even recent reports have, even though recent reports have said that Barcelona and PSG have been interested in him. Um, Solskjaer, of course, has got to work out his best eleven as well. Uh, because, like I said, Solskjaer's been making a lot of rotation this season, but he's been making a lot of rotation, reflecting on the amount of injuries that Manchester United have had. But it'd be interesting to see, you know, how Solskjaer uh, approaches the game against Tottenham. You know, what eleven is he going to go with in that? Maybe he has got an idea. Maybe Solskjaer as well needs to work out his best formation because he has been changing formation persistently this season. Like I mentioned before, he's been going with a 4-2-3-1. He's been going with a 4-3-3 a few times. He's been going with a 3-5-2. From my own perception, like I've mentioned before, I think we'll look more expansive with that 3-5-2 formation. Maybe Solskjaer as well needs to give you know the youngsters more opportunities, uh, more, more opportunities when the season resumes. And like I said, Tino, we have got things to look forward to. We've got things to look forward to. You know, we've got the FA Cup to look forward to because we're into the quarterfinals. And we've got, you know, the Europa League to look forward to because we're in, we're in the last eight. And, you know, at the FA Cup in the Europa League is a chance of us getting some silverware on the board under Solskjaer. And, you know, if we can, you know, win, win a trophy, win at least one trophy... 
Um, it will be a memorable first full season for Ole Gunnar Solskjaer. So that's obviously you no know, positive because you know we've not yet won anything um, under Solskjaer. And obviously you no know, Solskjaer's been at the football club. Is it around? 17 months now or just over 17 months so he has been at the football club over the year he has been at the football club over the year and that like i said though uh soul shino won't be only focusing on the incomings in the summer transfer window he will also be focusing on the outgoings as well i think soul is planning to get rid of around six or seven players in the summer transfer market uh, like I said, I think we're going to get rid of Phil Jones. We're going to get rid of Lingard. We're going to get rid of Andres Pereira. Delo De could possibly go. Uh, Angel Gomez. We've also got to make a decision on these future as well. I think personally, though, Angel Gomez is leaving Manchester United uh, when his contract does expire at the end of next month because there's no signs of Angel Gomez signing a new contract at the football club. No signs whatsoever of him signing a new contract. But we have put forward quite a few contracts offers for him. You know, I think, like I mentioned, you know, James Garner is going to be going out on loan. Uh, Dylan Levitt's going to be going out on loan. Possibly Ethan Laird. Um, Alexis Sanchez. Uh, Solskjaer's confirmed he's not part of his plans for next season. So Sanchez won't be coming back to Manchester United. But Sanchez is facing a dilemma because we don't want him back. And Inter Milan have got no intentions of getting him on a permanent transfer. Uh, like I said, Small and Rojo will go on permanent transfers as well. Um, Dean Henderson, he's obviously out on loan at the moment with Sheffield United. Got to make an admission, he has been a revelation for Sheffield United as Dean Henderson. Um, I don't know if we yet made a decision on his future. Um, I think we're going to be loaning him back out for next season because David De Gea, of course, he's going to remain our number one goalkeeper and David De Gea has been our number one goalkeeper for several years and that. Uh, but I think, you know, we don't want to get rid of Dean Ensign permanently because, you know, we do see him as a foreseeable uh, replacement for David De Gea. You know, so we see Dean Ensign as a foreseeable future, but we do see him as a long-term replacement for David De Gea and that, you know, so there you go. Yeah, so definitely no players are going to leave in the summer. I think a total of 19 players have left, departed the football club since Ole Gunnar Solskjaer got recommended in. Uh, he's got rid of around, is it, eight or nine senior players. Uh, there's around nine or ten young ones that Solskjaer also let go as well. So let's just put that into the equation. Uh, but like I said, you know, Solskjaer does, does deserve more time at the football club. You know, he does deserve at least another season. And he does deserve at least a couple of more transfer windows and that, you know, to see who else he can recommend into the football club. Like I said, so far, Solskjaer's enjoyed three transfer windows at the football club. Didn't recommend anyone in recommend anyone in his first transfer window. But in the two previous windows, he's recommended five players in and spent around £220 million. And I've been very, very impressed, you know, with the players, you know, that he has recommended in. Oli Gunnar Solskjaer and you know definitely got to say you know the sign of Bruno Fernandes has saved Oli Gunnar Solskjaer's job at Manchester United it really really has saved his job but I credit him you know for the players that he has recommended in so far like I mentioned so the summer transfer window will be Solskjaer's fourth transfer window as Manchester United manager because he is still in the process of rebuilding. Don't forget, you know, Solskjaer is inheriting the vast majority of Jose Mourinho's players, because the vast majority of these players are Jose Mourinho's. There's only a few players that Sol there's only a few players that have left who Jose Mourinho brought in, who of course Solskjaer's got rid of. There's still a couple of players here from the Van Gaal era, and there's still Matt Reeve from the David Moyes era. Still a couple of players here from the Ferguson era, but the vast majority of the players that we had under Ferguson have now departed the football club and that. So there you go. But, you know, Solskjaer knows he's got the backing of Ed Woodward and he's also got, you know, the backing of the Glazers. Um, Ed Woodward has assured quite a few times this season that Ole Gunnar Solskjaer's job is safe, even though we have enjoyed our worst start ever to a Premier League season. And like I said, Solskjaer was very, very close to getting sacked earlier on in the season. And obviously at that point, there was talks of Mauricio Pochettino coming in. There was talks of, you know, Masmiliano Allegri coming in. Don't forget we went in for Mauricio Pochettino um, before Solskjaer got named Manchester United manager. 
uh, permanently. We went in for Mauricio or Pochettino and that. So there you go. But I'm not too sure if Solskjaer is a foreseeable future for us. We're looking to make around three or four signings in the summer. Transfer window because Solskjaer believes we need around three or four signings to become title contenders next season. That At the moment, City has strides ahead of us and Liverpool has strides ahead of us. You know, so there you go. But like I've mentioned before, I think we can enjoy the perfect summer transfer window. I really, really do. Because a lot of clubs are going to face an unprecedented summer transfer window. Like I mentioned, New Arsenal going to get there. They've had players taking wage cuts. Daniel Levy doesn't like to spend money at Tottenham. City, they've got a lot of money. But obviously, you know, they're banned from the Champions League for the next two seasons for breaking financial fair play rules. I uh, don't know what Chelsea going to do. David Einstein said the other week that Liverpool may not sign anybody in the summer transfer window. So we could actually benefit from this. And the top six sides do fear our transfer strategy. They fear our transfer strategy, you know, they were the top six sides in that. So there you go. And, you know, Solskjaer made the admission. He said, you know, a couple of weeks ago that we will enjoy a different transfer window to the recent ones, you know, that we have enjoyed. Uh, Woodward's also been talking a lot about, you know, what we're going to do in the summer transfer window and that because these big decisions to make in the summer, you know, who we're going to get in and who we're going to get rid of on that. And we've got to make sure they are the correct decisions. So I've got to hope Solskjaer recommends the right players and he gets rid of the right players and that. So there you go. And... And obviously... Ed Woodward did say last month, this was before, you know, he revealed our latest financial figures, obviously. He says, you know, we won't do business as usual in the summer transfer market. And he did rule out big transfers to Manchester United and that. But I don't know if we can actually, you know, give Ole Gunnar Solskjaer an official transfer budget in this summer transfer window, reflecting on the latest financial figures and that. Like I said, Solskjaer is our fourth permanent manager since the Ferguson era. We have sat three managers since the Ferguson era, and that was David Moyes, Louis van Gaal and Jose Mourinho. But we have been playing catch-up for the last six or seven years. We've only won three trophies since Fergie left, and that was the Europa League and League Cup under Mourinho and the FA Cup under Louis van Gaal. But we spent close to the billion pound range, you know, recruiting players in the last six or seven years, and we've recruited over 30 of players in. Uh, obviously, you know, my other videos, I give you the news on Jack Grealish, you know, the news on him now. Um, I, I've also been keeping up to date on the news on Jude Bellingham, you know, they're two of our priority targets as well. So there you go. So anyway, guys, that's everything to update today. Drop your comments, likes, below on the channel. If you do, consider subscribe as always and take care. God bless. See you all again very, very soon.